Hi, I'm Jeff Furon. I'm director of the Craniofacial Center in Dallas, Texas. And I'm here to discuss the paper entitled Temporal Hollowing Find the Surgical Correction of Unicoronal Craniosynostosis. It's by Derek Steinbacher, Jason Wink, and Scott Bartlett. You know, craniosynostosis operations are pretty cool procedures. The surgeons disassemble the skull and then rebuild it to create a normal appearance and reduce intracranial pressure. With the operation over, the patient looks better, and the surgeon and the family agree the operation was a success. But was it? The success of any craniofacial procedure performed early in life can only be truly ascertained at skeletal maturity. In the July 2011 issue of PRS, the authors sought to answer the question, what causes the residual asymmetries they note in their patients following plagiocephaly corrections? More specifically, is the temporal hollowing they note more of a bony phenomenon or soft tissue atrophy? As a background to this study, others have found that after craniosynostosis corrections, growth is not normal. Our center has published anthropometric data showing that following single sutural synostosis corrections, growth is not normal with the tendency of the skull shape over time to recapitulate the presenting deformity. Dr. Alex Kane has also presented CT data showing reduced bony growth following their plagiocephaly corrections. On the other hand, a number of studies have looked at temporal hollowing that can occur following any procedure that results in elevation of the temporalis muscle. Some show diminished muscular volume and others fat atrophy. So with this background in mind, the authors assembled a case series of 15 patients, all of whom who'd undergone plagiocephaly corrections on average 13 years earlier. So this is a pretty long-term study. The authors brought the patients back for CT scan and photographic analysis. What did they find? They found over the long term, the temporalis muscle was only slightly diminished, whereas there was a much greater reduction in the bony dimension, up to four millimeters in some areas. The authors concluded that the temporal hollowing they note is primarily a bony phenomenon. So this begs the next question, what caused this asymmetry? Was it an inadequate initial operation, poor subsequent growth, or a combination of the two? I think it's fair to say that most surgeons faced with their own suboptimal results are gonna go with poor growth. Whereas if other surgeons did the operation, well, they're just not doing it right. The authors of this current study did state that they tried to overcorrect the deformity, but they do not present any measurements to document this overcorrection nor do they tell us the average age upon which the children were operated. Perhaps the more important question is, how can we use their results to improve the care we bring our patients? Basically, I think we have two options. The first is to delay our corrections. You know, between three and 10 months of age, infants undergo explosive growth. During the seven month period, head circumferences increase on average more than one third of lifetime totals. So delaying surgery till after this time means there's less growth going forward, which might negatively impact our results. The second option is to overcorrect the observed deformity, taking into account the amount of future growth lying ahead. And admittedly, this requires some experience. Either way, I believe that keeping in mind the long-term results presented in this paper, as well as those in previous studies, can help us all to specifically visualize those areas requiring overcorrection, hopefully bringing better results to all our patients.